All right, guys, so a couple of things. Firstly, well done to everybody who entered the giveaway competition. It is still on for 13 days. So for the next 13 days, if you enter the competition at howtolucid.com forward slash enter, you'll be in with a chance of winning $80 worth of Lucid Dream products as well as a bunch of other stuff. So how do you Lucid Dream without sleep paralysis? So those of you who have been in this space for a while will know that sleep paralysis is one of those scary, annoying things that usually you can't really avoid. When you're having a lucid dream with techniques like the wild or the wake back to bed, in general, you're going to experience sleep paralysis at least maybe a third of the time. At least this is what a lot of beginners email me telling me that is happening. Now, sleep paralysis is not desirable. Unless you're like a thrill seeker and you like the danger side of lucid dreaming, which by the way, I'm making another video about tomorrow. Uh, sleep paralysis is not a desirable experience to have. Okay, it's scary, it can feel almost painful, it can definitely be uncomfortable uh, in the sense that you can't, you don't feel like you can escape it, it's like a crushing feeling on your chest. You might see things like the sleep paralysis hat man or the demon or whatever. The, these things are all manifestations of our, of our fears, really. But there are ways of lucid dreaming without experiencing sleep paralysis at all. And I think these are these are the methods which I personally use the most, and these are which I, these are the methods I encourage my friends and people that I coach lucid dreaming in. I encourage people to use these methods I'm going to talk about now. So, sleep, let's just let's just rewind a little bit. So, sleep paralysis is what your body does, or what your mind does, I should say, to paralyze your body so that you don't act out your dreams in real life. If you didn't experience sleep, if you didn't have sleep paralysis, if that didn't exist, then every night everybody would be running around, sleepwalking, kicking their partners in the thigh, knocking things off the night table and sort of injuring themselves, right, as they act out their dreams. If you have certain sleep disorders, I, I don't know the names of all of them, but if you have certain disorders, you don't have sleep paralysis. And, and part of the disorder is that you either, a lot of sleep disorders, in the world today are either you don't have proper REM sleep, so you can't experience a restful sleep, or you have a, dis a sleep disturbance, right? So you don't experience sleep paralysis, so you're there acting out your dreams and, and sleepwalking and all this sort of stuff. So in general, sleep paralysis is good, right? If you, if you spoke to anybody with a sleep disorder or someone who doesn't have it, who's someone who sleepwalks and moves things around in the night, they will tell you they really wish they could have sleep paralysis because it would stop that happening. It's a good thing and it's a natural thing that your body has developed to stop you hurting yourself in the night. That being said, if you're trying a lucid dream, you are going to experience more of it than you would like, okay? The reason for that is that most people, when they go to sleep, they fall asleep pretty quickly. So quickly, in fact, that they don't experience sleep paralysis at all. Although it still happens, they're already unconscious when it does happen. Whereas for lucid dreamers, especially using techniques like the wild and the wake back to bed, you're intentionally holding your consciousness there. You're intentionally staying awake in your mind while your body falls asleep and becomes paralyzed. And the result of that is sadly that you experience the paralysis. You experience that feeling of not being able to move as your body moves, as, as your uh, consciousness moves from being awake to being unconscious and being able to lucid dream. So that's, that's the intro, right? Three minutes of intro. The way that you lucid dream without that is one of two ways, one of two main ways. So you've got the mild technique, the mnemonic induced lucid dream, and you've got things like the writing induced lucid dream and the mantras and the, the dials, right? Dialed meaning dream initiated lucid dream. I'm not gonna explain how to do these exact techniques because I have other videos that explain those. You just need to look on my channel or type in dialed or mild into YouTube or Google. You'll find articles and videos about that but I want to explain why they work, okay? So as we've said in previous videos and in the start of this video and everything like that, the main reason that people experience sleep paralysis is because they're keeping their mind awake while their body falls asleep. It involves keeping yourself awake as you fall asleep. Whereas the techniques I've just mentioned, the dialed, the mild, you don't need to do that. You can naturally lucid dream by just falling asleep naturally falling asleep fast enough that you won't experience sleep paralysis and then naturally entering a lucid dream later, whether that's through the mnemonics, the mantras, the expectation, the intention, or whether it's just through the dream itself inspiring a lucid dream and a, and a lucid state within you. You don't need to do things like the, the way back to bed in the wild. They are, I would say, 
certainly the weight back to bed is is more of a beginner technique whereas the mild and the dialed are for those who want to advance in lucid dreaming without experiencing the sleep paralysis and without having to put in the effort and uh, discomfort associated with interrupting your sleep in the morning because that's really the other thing guys those techniques the wild and the weight back to bed they involve interrupting your sleep to the point where if you keep doing it for a long period of time you're going to be fatigued you're going to not feel good uh, and it's going to take away your energy whereas the mild and the, uh, the dialed techniques they are much more natural soft and sort of an easy going approach to lucid dream which you can do for a long time you know you can do those for several years you can do indefinitely right you can do those techniques indefinitely you won't feel tired they won't lose their effect they'll always work uh, you know within reason and they're just it's just easier you know it's just you don't have to interrupt your sleep you don't have to wake up at 4am and set an alarm and then go back to bed and everything like that so I would highly suggest that if you're trying to lucid dream without sleep paralysis that you try the dialed and the mild techniques. I'll try and link in the description to my other videos. Uh, but failing that you can just go on howtolucid.com and have a look, be on the uh, techniques list there. So if you're watching this video and it's before 2019 there's a good chance you can still enter my giveaway which is at howtolucid.com forward slash enter. Not the enter button, you need to type out E-N-T-E-R. Uh, there'll be a link for that in the description as well. See you next time.